Lori Turing in Wonderland Studios presents Nyquil and Cocaine, a face-off novelization. Chapter 5, Weekend at Bernie's Scenario. The psychiatrist told me to keep writing this book. I think I should get a second opinion, but for now I shall continue. Travolta continues to swerve his jeep around to avoid suiciding with the massive airplane. Despite the fact that the police cars are going 70 miles per hour directly behind the plane, Travolta's jeep has plenty of time and space to do a sliding 180 degree spin and catch up immediately to the airplane. He also avoids getting struck by one of the many cars he swerved directly in front of. Editing makes fools of us all, unless you're Johnny Travolta. Travolta yells into his radio for all the units to pin the airplane in. We see the police cars start to swarm the plane while a helicopter flies overhead. It makes you wonder what their plan of action was before Travolta yelled the obvious at them. Were they just going to keep chasing the airplane from behind to see where it went? I can tell you exactly where it would go. A place where normal cars cannot follow. Travolta pulls his physics bending jeep alongside the plane and stares at it like he's confused as to what it is. He has either never seen an airplane before or he legitimately believes it to be a goddamn dragon. The door of the dragon slides open and Tongue Sucker Jones and Cage peep out. Cage says, One of yours, Sean? It should be noted that Travolta, Sean Archer or not, is in a goddamn loud jeep, chasing an even louder goddamn airplane. Also, they are surrounded by all sorts of other noises from the other cop cars, helicopters, and the radio inside the jeep, which is no doubt chatty. There is simply no way Travolta could have possibly heard him. It's so loud, I doubt even Tongue Sucker Jones heard him, and she's 17 inches away from his words hole. Although she probably knew what he said due to tongue-sucking voodoo mind-meld magic. Their minds are officially linked. Wait, I guess not, because Cage focuses really hard on her sucking on his tongue before shooting Tongue Sucker Jones in the back. She smashes into the pavement like a wooden mannequin and does a number of rolls across the glorious Southern California International Airport runway. Despite his perseverance throughout the chase, Travolta slams in the brakes and comes to a complete stop. He again isn't struck by any of the other police cars who are now a quarter of a mile back on the runway. They just can't decide how far back they are from the airplane at any given moment. The magic of the runway strikes again. Travolta does a dramatic look through the windshield and we see Cage hanging out of the airplane still. He's holding his Chinese wall gun and gives a little shrug that says, well, what can you do? All I see is him holding out his hands to represent his inner decision to release the magical powers of either NyQuil or cocaine. Like the devil and angel on your shoulders, only in this case they're both chemical devils. Travolta and his buddy get out of the jeep and run over to the corpse of Tongue Sucker Jones. Apparently the chase has ended as all the other police cars have also stopped and the helicopter has landed. All police work must end the second Travolta decides to be overly dramatic. The nameless friend of Travolta rolls over the body of Tongue Sucker Jones, possibly to see if she's ready for a second go wrong of tongue fellatio. But she looks fairly dead to me, so we'll put a pin in that and come back to it later. Travolta kicks an elderly man out of his helicopter seat while screaming at him to hurry the fuck up. The elderly man looks understandably confused as hell as he's being berated by an insane person hijacking a sweet ride. Travolta gets into the helicopter and takes off. He gives his partner a look that says, I'm a naughty Travolta, look what I'm doing. This apparently pisses off his partner for some reason. The helicopter immediately flies over the camera which spins around to reveal that the helicopter is directly behind Cage's plane. Did the pilot of the plane also stop the chase to mourn the death of the greatest tongue sucker in a generation? The chase was like children playing football in the street and her death was a car passing by. Everyone just had to wait for the death to pass before the chase could resume. That, or again, we're dealing with magical runway powers. Travolta positions the helicopter behind the airplane in a very sexual mounting position. The airplane was presenting and the helicopter capitalized on the opportunity. This enrages Cage as he is the only thing allowed to ooze sexuality in this movie. He won't allow Travolta or a helicopter to upstage his manliness. Cage orders the pilot to take off now, but the helicopter is smashing into it, taking off bits of the plane or something. I don't know, planes aren't my specialty. Cage yet again has to remind the pilot to keep being a pilot by yelling FLY directly into the man's face. The pilot meekly explains that he can't despite the aggressive reminders to do so. Cage follows up with more advice consisting of FLY BITCH! The pilot bitch does attempt to fly yet again by moving his monogram steering wheel back in an effort to take off. The helicopter proceeds to disembowel the wing of the plane like Jason Voorhees as the wing guts spill out into the runway. Cage comes up with a bright idea of utilizing a battle plan that doesn't consist entirely of screaming monosyllabically at a pilot to be that thing he is. The new battle plan? Shooting at Travolta in the helicopter. Travolta shows lightning fast reflexes by dodging the three bullets. The helicopter pulls away to the side and Cage gives a face I thought only a pouting six year old could use before slipping back into the plane. Travolta's partner screams out strategy into the radio because that is all his character is here to do. Did he throw Tongue Sucker Jones in the passenger seat? We don't see her, but we have to assume he's pulling a weekend at Bernie's scenario with her corpse. Again, the pin is still in with her character. We will revisit this. 
Travolta is so amazing that he spins the helicopter around to the front of the airplane and manages to blow out one of the plane's engines with some perfectly placed bullets. The engine blows up several times like the 4th of July. We cut to some knobs located somewhere in the world that say Fire 3 Pole. Not sure what this means or how it makes sense, but then we see Cage berating the pilot a little more. The pilot says that there is an engine out and that they must stop. Cage doesn't handle bad news well, so he does the only thing that makes sense to a coked out terrorist. He shoots the pilot and ruins his monogram steering wheel. The airplane, which honestly is just a large car to this point considering it hasn't seen any real air yet, proceeds to swerve all over the runway as if it were being steered by someone that slammed a whole case of NyQuil. Because it is. Cage looks at the steering wheel with a sarcastic anger as if the situation is the steering wheel's fault. The reckless steering couldn't possibly have anything to do with the decision Cage just made by executing the solitary person on the plane that actually knows how to control said plane. At this point I find myself wondering what in the fuck Pollux is doing in the back of the plane. We haven't seen him do anything since he beat the poor tongue-sucking hero woman repeatedly in the face. Is he just in the back pissing himself? Seems like the type of thing he would be doing. A massive building is magically now on the path of the airplane, so Cage pulls on random things inside the cockpit and does a maniacal look out the window like he's trying to force his skull to pop out through his skin. The airplane crashes through the glass front of the building several times and we hear literal firework noises passed off as explosions. Gallons of blue and red goo spray all over the plane. So many 4th of July things happening at once it feels like it was done on purpose. Is this scene supposed to be a holiday scene? Not sure yet, but the plane comes to a stop and so did the police cars. Travolta lands the helicopter and a cop car slides in the frame. Is the cop driving this last police car the famed Sean Archer? Are we finally meeting him? I can't wait to find out. Until next time, and in the meantime, I'm Phoenix West. I'll be back with a time-bending witch. So long, citizens. If you somehow managed to enjoy whatever the fuck this project is, feel free to follow us with the following links. Cage looks at the steering wheel with a... What happened is I realized I have six minutes left to record this and I, like, my mind is not letting me fucking speak at this point. It is just, uh, it's crashing in on itself like the movie Face Off. Good God, I can't think of the fucking movie I'm doing. I'm doing a whole fucking book about it. Oh my God.